Greetings, dear subscribers and casual listeners of my channel. The world of fan theories is vast and fascinating, but today we will discuss those theories that were so accurate that the creator of the Harry Potter universe herself agreed with them and confirmed their likelihood. 1. Dumbledore and Death In this theory, we will explore the connection between the characters from the tale of the three brothers and the characters from the Harry Potter books. So, the story tells us about three brothers, each of whom received a powerful magical artifact from death, the Elder Wand, the Resurrection Stone, and the Invisibility Cloak. According to the theory, Voldemort, with his thirst for power and control, represents the eldest brother, Antioch Peveril, who obtained the Elder Wand. Cadmus Peveril is Severus Snape, and here we see a parallel with the Resurrection Stone, symbolising the longing and pain of losing a loved one and the desire to bring her back to life. Ignotus Peveril is Harry Potter, who not only managed to escape death twice, but also, as we see in Deathly Hallows, overcame the fear of meeting it. Yes, the direct analogy between Harry and Ignotus is, of course, the fact that Harry becomes the direct heir of the Invisibility Cloak. But if we look deeper and accept the idea that Dumbledore plays the role of death in the tale, we can see that the scene in Deathly Hallows, where Harry and Dumbledore meet on a platform resembling King's Cross Station, is a direct reference to the moment in the legend where Ignotus willingly chooses to reunite with Death, who awaits him like an old friend. Indeed, in her Twitter, Rowling confirmed that this theory has merit. It's a beautiful theory, and it fits. 2. The relationship between Albus Dumbledore and Gellert Grindelwald Dumbledore is undoubtedly one of the most significant figures in the Harry Potter universe, but let's admit it, until a certain point we knew almost nothing about him. He is the headmaster of Hogwarts, has a certain status and position in the magical world, and influences the course of events. But as for his personal life, we know very little, if anything. We know he was never married and had no children, and the only personal detail is that he had a brother and once had a sister. Thus, we have to acknowledge that Albus Dumbledore remains a mystery. But one day, a fan of J.K. Rowling's work asked her if Dumbledore ever had romantic feelings for anyone. This fan, being a supporter of the Dumbledore-Professor McGonagall pairing, likely expected a positive answer in favour of that ship. However, Rowling's answer was quite unexpected, as she confirmed Dumbledore's feelings for another character in the saga. 3. Magical Schools Around the World Before the events of the fourth book, did any of you wonder whether magical people might exist outside of Britain, and that there could be other wizarding schools besides Hogwarts? Fans asked Rowling this very question, suggesting that it made no sense to confine magic to one country. Eventually, Pottermore provided information about other schools such as Castelobruxo in South America, Koldov Storitz in Russia, Mahutokoro in Japan, Wagadu in Africa, and Ilvamorni in North America. 4. Hermione's School Years It's hard to find a bigger fan of studying than Hermione. Her use of the time-turner in her third year speaks volumes. Rowling revealed that both Ron and Harry achieved the careers they dreamed of at the Ministry of Magic, despite not finishing their final year at Hogwarts. The same offer was made to Hermione, but she wasn't one to take shortcuts. Many fans speculated, and Rowling later confirmed, that Hermione couldn't resist completing her education at Hogwarts and returned for her final year, which she had missed while hunting Horcruxes. This outcome is logical for her character, while Ron and Harry didn't see the point, unlike Hermione, who dedicated far more time to her studies than her friends. 5. There are no meaningless deaths in the Harry Potter books. Many fans, heartbroken over the deaths of their favourite characters, accused Rowling of killing off characters unnecessarily. Others insisted that the world of Harry Potter is too complex for anything to be left to chance, and that each death had a purpose. 
Rowling agreed with this sentiment. For example, when responding to criticism that Remus, Lupin and Tonks could have been spared, she pointed out the parallel with the fate of James and Lily Potter. The death of Lupin and Tonks is a sacrifice that helps defeat Voldemort in the Second Wizarding War, just as James and Lily's death was a sacrifice during Voldemort's first rise to power. Their orphaned son, Teddy, mirrors the story's beginning when, as shown in The Philosopher's Stone, Dumbledore holds baby Harry, whose parents have just died. Rowling confirmed that this was intentional. The story comes full circle. Additionally, Rowling has mentioned several times that, whether we like it or not, sometimes sacrifices have to be made. For example, she has stated that initially she had chosen Arthur Weasley to die in the fifth book. However, she later changed her mind, writing on Twitter, Arthur lived, so Lupin had to die. According to Rowling, the Weasley family had already suffered enough with the loss of Fred, which was in itself one of the most heartbreaking moments in the book. 6. The Ever Unhappy Dursleys Many noticed that the Dursleys always had an unreasonable attitude toward Harry. Here, fans are divided in their opinions. Some say it's simple jealousy on Petunia's part, as she was denied the opportunity to attend Hogwarts, and fear of Harry's magical abilities. Others suggest that it's because Harry, at the time, was carrying a fragment of Voldemort's soul, and was thus a horcrux, which triggered the Dursleys' anger, hatred and fury. However, Rowling clarified this by saying that, technically, Harry wasn't a horcrux. He was more like a vessel, a container holding a part of Voldemort's soul. So, unfortunately, the Dursleys' horrible behaviour has no real justification. 7. Pureblood Wizarding Ideology To maintain pureblood status in the wizarding world, both parents of a child must belong to the prestigious list of the Sacred 28, meaning they are considered pure-blood wizards. In general, the selection of partners was very meticulous, and any hint of muggle-borns or half-bloods in the family tree would raise significant concerns about marriage. However, many fans noticed that pure-blood wizards made up a small percentage of the magical population, leading to a limited choice of partners which brings up various questions and problems that Rowling has acknowledged. For example, she agrees that the overzealous efforts of purebloods to preserve their bloodline by marrying only other purebloods could lead to genetic defects, such as increasing psycho-emotional instability, as seen in Bellatrix Lestrange, or other abnormalities, like Voldemort's mother, Merope Gaunt, who had weak magical abilities. Rowling also pointed out that almost all magical families are related to one another, in large part due to the Peveril lineage. So it's not surprising that, for example, Harry Potter and Voldemort are distant relatives, as Harry is a descendant of Ignotus Peveril and Voldemort of Cadmus Peveril. This means that two mortal enemies are, in fact, connected by their pure blood lineage. 8. Ron and Hermione the relationship between Ron and Hermione is a classic example of how opposites attract. Many fans, seeing that the hints about these two becoming a couple were true, speculated that their relationship might not be the smoothest or most ideal. In general, Rowling agreed, saying that Ron and Hermione are indeed opposites in many ways, their interests, temperaments and so on. She revealed that she paired them for personal reasons rather than external factors that might suggest they weren't the best match. She also confirmed that their relationship might not be entirely smooth and that they could even require some help from a muggle marriage counsellor at some point. However, she added that their ability to resolve problems through both magical and muggle means could provide a balancing factor in their relationship. Nine. Wizard's Lifespan Fans often speculated that there might be differences between muggles and wizards beyond just magic, including physical development. Rowling agreed with this and pointed out that wizards have a much longer lifespan than ordinary people. While an average person might live to around 80, 
Wizards, according to Rowling, have an average lifespan of about 200 years. For example, at the time of his death, Dumbledore was 115 and Voldemort was 72, yet both were able to fight each other vigorously at the Ministry of Magic during the battle for the prophecy, without showing any signs of being old men. Tenth Seer Trelawney Sybil Trelawney is one of the most mysterious and eccentric figures at Hogwarts. Her dramatic predictions and strange behaviour often made students laugh more than respect her. Harry, Ron and Hermione saw her as a comical old lady who saw death everywhere. Even Dumbledore, who hired her, did so more for one important prophecy than for her actual abilities. However, fans believe that there is more to her eccentricity. The Christmas dinner in their third year is a prime example of this. Trelawney suddenly declared that the first person to stand up from the table would die, since there were thirteen people present. Everyone laughed, but what if she was right? If Ron brought Scabbers with him, there were indeed thirteen at the table, and Dumbledore was the first to stand. As Trelawney predicted, he died several years later. This subtle and eerie prediction was hidden behind her seemingly absurd words. That same evening, Trelawney predicted that Lupin would soon leave Hogwarts. Lupin was an excellent teacher, but he indeed left at the end of the year when it was revealed he was a werewolf. Her words once again came true, although no one expected it. Trelawney always did this, predicting the future in ways that people didn't believe until it was too late. Another mysterious prediction concerned Harry's birth. Trelawney said he was born in the middle of winter. Everyone knows Harry's birthday is July 31st and that is clearly not winter. But what if she was referring not to Harry, but to the part of Tom Riddle's soul inside him? Voldemort, whose soul resided in Harry, was born in December, in the middle of winter. This makes us wonder, could she actually have seen Voldemort's soul within Harry? Fans often refer to the theory of the curse of Cassandra. In Greek mythology, Cassandra could predict the future, but no one believed her. Perhaps Trelawney was also a victim of her own gift. She often got carried away with grim predictions, so when her prophecies did come true, no one took her seriously. Let's not forget her most famous prediction, the return of Voldemort. She made this prophecy in a trance, and although many students thought it was a fluke, Dumbledore knew her gift was real. Her words were the key to the future, but she was treated with such scepticism that even this prophecy seemed like a coincidence to many. Eleventh, Aberforth's Sin after discussing Trelawney's prophecies, it makes sense to move on to the next theory, which concerns the Dumbledore family tragedy. The death of Ariana Dumbledore was a tragedy that changed the lives of her brothers forever. On that fateful day, when Albus, Aberforth and Gellert Grindelwald clashed in a duel, no one knew what would happen. Ariana became an accidental victim of that furious magical battle. Who cast the deadly spell remains a mystery. Albus feared the truth his entire life. He was the greatest wizard of his time, but even he couldn't handle the thought that he might have killed his own sister. This fear haunted him until the end of his days. But what if it wasn't Albus who was responsible? Fans have long speculated that the spell that killed Ariana came from Aberforth. Unlike Albus and Gellert, Aberforth wasn't a skilled duelist. In the chaos of the battle, his spell could have easily gone off course and hit his sister. This would explain why he became so withdrawn and bitter after her death. He blamed Albus, but perhaps deep down, he knew he was at fault. His words in Deathly Hallows are full of bitterness and pain. He accuses Albus of not protecting their sister, but the real reason for his anger might run much deeper. Perhaps he couldn't forgive himself for the accidental spell that took Ariana's life. Aberforth clearly avoided talking about that day. His silence seemed suspicious. If he suspected he was responsible, it's no wonder he chose to bury the truth along with his memories. 
he isolated himself from the world, hiding behind the counter of the hog's head. Twelfth. Grindelwald is greater than Voldemort. Gellert Grindelwald and Voldemort are two of the greatest dark wizards, but their power and influence were very different. Grindelwald captured the attention of all Europe. His uprising spread across many countries, while Voldemort mostly operated in England. Grindelwald dreamed of world domination by wizards, whereas Voldemort focused on a narrow circle of followers, terrorizing and subjugating only those nearby. Grindelwald attracted people with his vision of wizarding greatness. He was a charismatic leader who gathered supporters from all over the world. Voldemort built his empire on fear. He was surrounded by Death Eaters who served him not out of loyalty, but out of terror. This is why Grindelwald appeared to be a more powerful leader, capable of convincing people, not just intimidating them. The Elder Wand is a symbol of absolute power. Grindelwald didn't simply steal it from the Master Grigorovich, as was once believed. There's a theory that he won it in battle, which explains why the wand recognized him as its master. Voldemort, in his quest for power, tried to obtain it, but the wand never accepted him. This highlights the difference between the two. Grindelwald earned his power, while Voldemort desperately sought it. The personalities of the two dark wizards also differ. Grindelwald wasn't a sadist. His pursuit of power was based on the idea of a world order where wizards would rule over muggles. Voldemort, on the other hand, was a pure psychopath, driven by a desire for destruction for his own pleasure. He killed without remorse, enjoying the power he held over others' lives. Grindelwald acted out of conviction, while Voldemort thrived on fear and death. Voldemort's followers were just as cruel as he was. Death Eaters, like Bellatrix Lestrange, were bloodthirsty. Grindelwald chose his allies differently. He surrounded himself with followers who believed in his ideology of wizard's right to rule. This made his army more focused and united by ideology, rather than a band of murderers. Grindelwald even respected his enemies. This can be seen in his attitude toward Dumbledore, whom he lost to, but never despised. Voldemort, by contrast, respected no one, not even those useful to him. He saw everyone as beneath him, including his own followers, which made him a more brutal and isolated leader. Grindelwald's defeat was tragic, but not without meaning. After his duel with Dumbledore, he was imprisoned in Nürmengard, where he spent the rest of his life reflecting on his actions. Voldemort, however, died in fear and anger, leaving behind nothing but emptiness. Even in defeat, Grindelwald remained a figure whose influence lingered in history. 13. The extinction of wizards Hogwarts is an enormous, majestic castle. Its halls and corridors seem endless, and its size is awe-inspiring. Harry Potter recalled that the Great Hall was so large that it could fit the Dursleys' entire house inside. Yet, despite its scale, there were fewer than a thousand students. This contrast raises the question, why does a castle built to hold thousands of students feel so empty? Fans believe this is due to a demographic crisis in the wizarding world. After the first wizarding war, the number of wizards drastically decreased. Families lost loved ones and many wizards died. Recovering from the war proved more difficult than expected. Even after Voldemort's defeat, the magical community continued to suffer the consequences. The number of wizards kept declining. But there's another reason. Pure-blood families like the Malfoys and Blacks always aimed to preserve the purity of their bloodlines. They avoided marriages with muggles and half-bloods. This isolation led to gradual decline. Fewer marriages meant fewer children, and the result is a magical community that shrinks with each passing year. Pure-blood families stubbornly refuse to integrate with muggles, worsening the situation. While wizards become fewer, Muggles continue to grow in numbers. 
this imbalance threatens the very existence of the wizarding world. If the magical community doesn't change, wizards could become a rare, nearly extinct civilization. Fans wonder, what if this trend continues? Hogwarts, once filled with students, may one day become empty. The magical world might be slowly dying. The isolation of pure-blood families is leading them to extinction, just as it did with the Blacks, who had almost vanished by the time the books begin. 14. The Centaur's Prophecy Harry's first encounter with Voldemort took place in the Forbidden Forest during his first year. This was the moment when Harry's fate first intertwined with the Dark Lord. Along with Hermione, Neville and Draco, Harry found himself in the forest as punishment. There, they saw a figure drinking unicorn blood. It was Quirrell with Voldemort hidden inside him. Harry sensed impending danger. Just when things seemed hopeless, Firenze the centaur appeared. He saved Harry, literally pulling him from the jaws of death. But not all centaurs were happy with this interference. Bane, one of the centaurs, was furious. He accused Ferenzi of disrupting the course of fate by intervening in human affairs. For centaurs, the stars are law, and they rarely interfere in events. Many fans believe that Bane could see the future. Perhaps he foresaw in the stars that Voldemort was meant to kill Harry in the Forbidden Forest. Bane believed that Harry was supposed to die at that moment and Ferenzi's intervention disrupted this destiny. His anger wasn't personal. He saw Ferenzi as having interfered with the fulfilment of a prophecy. But what if the stars weren't wrong, just delayed? Six years later, in that very same forbidden forest, Voldemort encounters Harry again. This time, Harry goes willingly to his death, intending to destroy the part of Voldemort's soul within him. Voldemort casts the killing curse and Harry dies in the same forest where he was once saved. For a moment it seems the prophecy has been fulfilled. Voldemort did indeed kill Harry, just as the stars predicted. But Harry's death wasn't final. He returned to life, altering the course of the entire war. This makes the moment even more symbolic. Harry was meant to die in the forest, but at the right time. Thank you for watching. I hope this means you found it interesting, and if so, don't forget to like, share your thoughts in the comments, and subscribe to the channel.